you hear me? Yes. All right, guys. It's been seven months. Longer than that, if you count the cuts that started happening in 2010. But at least seven months since we sat here in the legislature galleries in the middle of the night, and we swore to ourselves that we would remember in November. Yes. 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 And I know that probably everyone here is tired because I'm really tired, you guys. Amen. Amen. We have rallied. We have phone banked. We have canvassed door to door. We have donated to candidates when we may have never donated to a campaign before. We have researched who is running for offices that, I'll be honest, I didn't know existed a few years ago. And we know what made us so mad to begin with. We know what it means when they cut school funding. Our librarians can't buy books. Our janitors work fewer shifts. Our arts and music curriculum suffer. And our class sizes, we all know about the class sizes. They're overflowing. There isn't room for all the kiddos in the classes. We know about bad policy that was pushed through in the middle of the night to give money to private corporations in the form of Nouveau vouchers. And we know about the loss of tenor and how teachers are afraid to speak out because they might lose their jobs. The teachers who need to speak on behalf of our kids when legislators don't pay attention to their needs. And our anger has motivated us to say, no more. Not on our watch, not in Kansas. And we have been playing defense for a long time, working to protect our schools and our kids. And we are so close, so close to our election day where we can participate in the contract that makes up our democracy and say to those candidates who have failed our kids, no more. No more. And we are going to win. <laughs> On election night, I hope you watch the returns come in with your friends. I hope you have drinks and snacks and the companionship of good people. I hope you wear red shirts. Yes. And I hope, I know, that we are going to see the numbers come back the way that they have to. And we are going to watch candidate after candidate that we know will support public education defeat those who refuse. you have your victory signs ready to hold high above your head and that you have that warm feeling of triumph rush through you because you know that you did everything that you could and that you participated in making the most important election in the last 40 years here in the state of Kansas a successful one. And thank you. Thank you for everything you have done to ensure that that happens. So we are going to savor election night and we're gonna soak it in because we know we're not done. We still have work ahead of us and I'm sorry to say it because I know we're tired, but we do. Election night is vital because it is the turning of the corner, but we have to prepare to continue to fight a little bit longer because our budget is a shambles and that's going to hold true for whoever walks in to represent us in this building coming in January. Our tax policy is a mess. And our education budget is all that's left to cut because they already got rid of everything else. So we've seen cuts, but there will be more on the table if we are not prepared to be loud. Yes. So we have to stay in the game. So that 
that when they have to make the hard decisions, the decisions to alter that bad policy, and the decisions to fix our budget for the sake of our schools, and the decisions to remember what is best for our kids, those decisions will be made because we are holding their feet to the fire. Quality legislators are going to need our support because we're not going to get all good guys. So tonight, <laughs> I want to paint for you the vision we are working towards, the vision that can motivate us to continue. I want you to imagine that on a weekday afternoon in your local elementary school, you are visiting. And the first thing you notice when you get there is that the yard is mowed and outside the doors where the little plants and flowers grow to decorate it, it's weeded and it's nicely kept. Somebody paid the yard guy. You walk inside, inside and it's clean. Actually, it's sparkling. There's no trash. There's no graffiti. And that's because the janitors got paid. You walk into the first grade class, and there's only 18 kids in there because the class size was capped at 20. And the kiddo with disabilities who needs a little bit more help, he's got a para that the state actually paid for, so the money for that didn't have to come out of the school's general fund. You go in to check in on the kindergartners because let's be honest, that's a really fun grade to check in on. And it's the afternoon, remember? But all the kids are there because it's fully funded. And those families didn't have to scrape together that $250 a month to pay for their child to be there all day. recess there's a little kid who fell off the monkey bars and they think he might have a broken arm but the school nurse is there because there's a school nurse dedicated for that school she's got a salary and she's on it the kid's gonna be okay there's a new kid enrolling in the front office with his mom and she doesn't speak English but there's a social worker there that was paid for, who's helping her know what resources are available to her and making sure they have all the tools they need so that her child can be a success. The computer room has newish computers. They don't have to be brand new, but they work. And the kids in there, they're learning how to PowerPoint and email. A visit to the library is going to reveal not only a librarian, because we know not all our schools have those, but it's fully stocked. There's a book budget. Yes. Yes. There is a room for music, and there's instruments in it that are small enough for a child's hands. And there is an art room that is staffed with an art teacher that has a kiln to fire the coil pots that the kids are working on. And now we're going to imagine that in this school are teachers that don't just have a fully funded retirement plan, but are paid. Yes. A wage that respects the impossible and the impossibly rewarding job that they do for our kids every day. Yes. And finally, if this is your school in a rural community, I want you to imagine that the principal and the staff and the families who love it can breathe a little bit easier because the fear of losing it to the chopping block that is consolidation has receded just a little bit. Yeah. It is time we invested in our human capital. It is time we invested in our kids so that we can ensure that their future and the future of our state is as bright as we know it can be. We can imagine this, and we will imagine this as we move forward because this is what we are working for. And the reason it's so easy to imagine it is because we had it. Yeah. Yeah. And 
and we are going to bring it back. And we start on November 4th, and then we will stick with it until we have brought our vision to life. Game on for Candy!